It's YouTube Wednesday! Tech, I'm out! Hey, what's up guys? My name's Jake and today I'm going to try to show you how to make a customized uh, animated living portrait uh, with your own special character in it. You can put it in your haunt and get scares. Um, a lot of companies make these type of things. Um, we're going to try to do it on the, the cheap and do a homemade version. And some of the stuff you're going to need is the key of the whole thing, the digital HD bright sign player from Fright Props right there. You'll also need the input adapter for that player, just like this. Little piece also available from Cry Props. Then you're gonna need some type of computer monitor or TV screen to display your portrait on. You're gonna need a small guitar amplifier, powered speaker, uh, cheap computer speakers also work well, and some type of actor push button and wire. Um, these are available at any local electronics store, Fry's Radio Shack, and you can put it in a nice little grip there, a little piece of PVC pipe. Uh, easy to use. Fright Props also sells a really nice version if you want to go that route. And let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is shoot your customized footage. Now, if you have an icon character or a specific character inside your show that's going to work really well, you should put them in your portrait. Um, decide what they're going to wear. Decide who the actor is. Get all that stuff together. Um, choose a good costume. You see we have plenty of costumes here that we could use. Um, so what makes this unique uh, compared to the store-bought versions of this effect is that it's so customizable. Um, you can use it to help tell your story, and that's huge. So make sure that your character and that your costume that you're using uh, really help you know, move the story along in your show. Open your Bright Author software. All right, once you have the Bright Author software open, you want to go to File up in the left hand corner and select New Presentation. This is us creating a brand new project. Uh, so it's going to ask you what you want to save your project as. I'm going to call this Portrait. Right. And then it's going to ask you where you would like to save it. Select your destination folder. Below that, it's got questions about the bright sign unit. It's got your bright sign model, uh, which should already be auto populated. Uh, if not, you got a drop down menu. You can select the model player that you have there. We're using the HD120. The connector type, this is important because it's only going to put out uh, one signal at a time, either the HDMI or the VGA. For our use, we're using VGA, so we're going to leave it at that. Screen resolution is good. Monitor orientation is landscape. Um, it does give you the option in the software to change between a landscape and a portrait orientation uh, on the display, but because we shot our footage uh, in a portrait orientation and tilted it sideways when we edited it. Um, the computer seeing it is just a regular uh, portrait file, uh, or regular landscape file rather. Um, the computer doesn't know that the image is sideways, so when we tilt our TV or our monitor sideways, it's going to display correctly. So we're going to leave this as landscape. And then on the overscan settings, use full screen, leave that as is, and then click your create button. The next window that pops open offers different temp templates. I can't talk today. Templates that you can use uh, for different types of display. The bright sign players were originally engineered uh, for information kiosk and uh, informational boards and museums and convention centers, things of that nature. So you could set up configurations that show a primary video in the middle and have more information on the side, uh, time, temperature, still images, advertisements, things like that. For our use though, we're just going to select full screen, so it's real basic, nothing fancy, 
and then that opens up your playlist. Uh, first, go over to the right and it'll say non-interactive or interactive. We do have an interactive playlist. That's what allows us to make a triggerable file. So click that. You notice the display changes. The next thing you want to do is go to the left and browse for the folder where your files are coming from. All right, open the folder that you have stored your video files in. And after that, over on the left, you will see the video files that you can use. Um, you can also use still images. Now, because this is a portrait, what I have done is I have taken a section of our portrait video and made a still image of it. Uh, I'm going to use this as my ambient image. I'm going to click and drag it over into the playlist field first. Now, what the ambient or home image is indicated by the icon right here is when the bright sign player is powered up, it's going to play this on a loop. Or if it's an image, it's just going to display this image until it receives a command to do something different. So uh, you can put up to eight different files. So you could tell it from this home image to play eight different video files. Uh, we're only going to use one. We're keeping it simple because we want our portrait to attack and then go back to normal. So over here, I've got my video file of my uh, portrait attack, if you will. Now, you can do up to eight files, but instead of one through eight, the buttons are numbered zero through seven. Um, and they correlate to what files will play. Because we only have one, we can dedicate all of these buttons to playing that one file if we need to. Um, and the way you assign a file to one of the buttons is you click the button you want. So we'll start with zero and that's highlighted. Then you click the bottom of your home image and drag that line down to the next one. And then it displays right there that when button zero is pressed, it'll go from this image or video to this image or video. Um, because we're only using one, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag all eight buttons down there. And you don't have to do this. It's really more of a safety. Um, if uh, you hook up wires to the wrong port uh, or connect something instead of to output or input one or input two, um, all the inputs on the controller are now telling it to play this. So any one will work. Now, after you assign your buttons, trigger buttons to your triggerable files, you want to click on the little movie clipboard up here and click the bottom of your triggered file and draw a line back to the top. You notice these icons pop up. It shows that when this uh, file is done playing, it's going to cut back to the home video. Once all your assignments are made, it's time to publish this to the SD card. So you'll go up here on the top left, click the publish tab. It's going to open a window that tells you you have to save changes before you can continue. Just click yes. Presentation has now been saved. Click OK. And this looks confusing, but not to worry. We don't need any of this. Go over here to the lower left side and you see the button that says publish. You'll want to click that and it will write your files to your SD card. Complete. Click OK. Now you're good to close your Bright Author software. It's going to tell you that the schedule has been changed if you do not save it, et cetera, et cetera. These are features of the player that we're not using, so it won't make any difference to the project that we've done. Just click no, let that close out. Then you want to eject your SD card and you are ready to put it in your BrightSign player. All right, next we're gonna test our setup. You'll wanna connect your monitor with a VGA or HDMI cable to the BrightSign. For this, we are using a VGA. So make sure it's hooked up. Make sure that your monitor is powered on. And ours is. The next step is going to be inserting your SD card into the BrightSign player and you want to do that before you power it up. It goes right there in the slot on the side. Nice and easy. Then you want to take your power supply for your BrightSign player. And go ahead and plug it in. And just like all electronics, it'll take just a couple seconds and it'll warm up. And when it wakes up, 
um, and starts playing, it's going to go straight to that uh, ambient or home image and should display it on the screen. And there you can see we have our portrait image and we are hooked up. All right, along with the bright sign player, you'll also want to get a adapter. Um, and what the adapter does is it plugs into the GPIO port on the end of the bright sign player like that. And this allows you to control the player through uh, various means, either a show controller or a motion sensor or uh, just a simple push button, things like that. Um, today we're going to go just a simple actor push button uh, so that an actor can trigger the screaming portrait. So all you'll need is a basic 12 volt 0.5 amp power supply and your actor push button. Connect one side of your power supply to the common or C port. On there, can you guys see that? First one says C for your common and then they're labeled zero through seven, which correlates with the triggerable buttons uh, or files that can be loaded in the bright sign program. So we're just gonna use button zero, the first one and you want to connect one side of your actor trigger to that zero port. I have to trim my wires down here a little bit. I've got too much exposed copper. And then using a wire nut or some form of connector, you'll want to connect the other side of your power and your actor push button. So now you have this combination set up. And plug in to your bright sign video player like so. See that there? All right, now it's time to power up. All right, now our system is powered up. Um, the bright sign player is on, the input adapter is plugged in, it's got the 12 volt power supply and the actor button connected to it. Uh, it's sending that ambient signal over to our monitor. Now, when the button is pressed, you get that great scare shot. And as soon as the scare shot's done, it goes back to the ambient portrait. Now we are ready to decorate and install. Okay, the last part of this is optional, and that is adding sound to your panic portrait. Um, it'll work fine without sound, but sound gives it a little bit more of a scare punch. Again, it's completely up to you. Um, adding audio is really simple. We'll just uh, plug into the audio jack there on the side of the bright sign unit and go to a small speaker. In this case, we are using a, a small guitar amp. You could use computer speakers or a powered speaker. Uh, just depends on what you want to do. Um, also, I have built a frame to go around this. I've just built a simple frame for demo purposes, but you can get as elaborate as you want. Uh, decorate it, make it fancy, uh, make it fit your show. Uh, this project is all about telling the story and making the elements of your haunt blend. So uh, if you have a themed frame that goes with the environment that you put the picture in, as well as a character in the picture that, you know, might be a character from your show or a uh, custom character or personal character that you do, something that uh, really goes along with your haunt, that's the advantage you get uh, with making your own effect like this versus buying one of the uh, generic ones. So uh, we've got our sound hooked up. We've got our picture hooked up, we've got our actor button hooked up, and here's a quick demo of the final product. And there you go. Screaming animatronic video picture frame effect. Do it yourself.